episode of Let's Talk. This is Sonia Bhattacharya and as you can see today I'm joined by a very dear friend of mine Dr. Nagurun Dhar on yet another episode. I believe we had done this a few months ago. Oh uh, yes. Before the second wave exactly. of Covid. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that is just so close to both of us. I think it's a journey that we both have walked through and hopefully a lot of you will be able to relate to it as well and you will be blessed by what we're going to share what the Lord has taught us actually throughout these many years and the topic is dealing with self-hate I think that's something we all have struggled with combated at some point just not liking the way we look and not liking our personality loathing ourselves almost and wanting to be like somebody else. So Dr. Nabarun, does that sound familiar to you? Is that something you walked through as well? Uh, yes, there was a point of time when I was very conscious about how I looked. I would think that people see me the same way I see myself. So I would really look at myself in the mirror and you know, I would not like what I see. I would not like that reflection mm. of mine because there were so many things. I would only see the flaws about myself. I wouldn't see the good parts. Maybe I just focused on the flaws, only the bad parts. So that made me so conscious that I would only think of how maybe that's how people see me as well. Mm -hmm. So I struggled with it a lot for many years actually. And what, if you don't mind me asking, what was that specific thing about yourself that you really disliked? Something in particular, you know? There were a few things, uh, to be honest. Uh, but one particular thing that I would like to say is my complexion uh, because we live in India and as we see the ads also the people prefer lighter skin people mm. and I am far away from that so I was very uh, I was very very conscious about that I was very conscious about my skin color maybe people uh, because people associate uh, a darker shade uh, of skin with uh, poverty and maybe he's not clean with all of that notions mm -hmm. all of those notions so I struggled with it a lot for quite some time mm -hmm. so I think I can also relate to it I think not complexion so much but just you know again uh, just people not liking the features mm -hmm. you know just saying that oh you have a flat nose or you have very tiny eyes and I, I remember getting a lot of these remarks in fact I talked about this in one of my earlier vlogs mm -hmm as well and uh, I remember you know there was this one phase in my life where I had a horrible uh, breakout and it wasn't a lot like a breakout it was just rashes all over and so if you observe if people who know me I think would know this specifically from class 8 to 10 I don't have many pictures because whenever I was asked to take a photograph and I did not have concealer on or makeup on imagine as a kid right class 8 I'm already using concealer because I was so conscious and I felt like I was so ugly that I would never take a photograph. And so I think that is, I mean, if you can relate to that, I want to tell you this hope for you. And the Lord has, you know, the capacity to just turn that entire thing around, that entire perspective. Exactly. You know, why I felt led to talk about this today, this topic, is because we all know the commandment that Jesus gives us. That love God and then love your neighbor as yourself. So if you exactly. look at it carefully, it's not so much just two commandments, but three commandments yeah. that we need to love our neighbors as ourselves. Yeah. And so if we can't love ourselves, we, we don't really have the ability to love the other person as well. So tell us, Dr. Navarun, you know, when you encountered Jesus, I'm sure it was not an overnight thing, right? Where no, you it wasn't. Wake up and you're like, hey, I'm so <laughs> handsome and I'm amazing. <laughs> It probably obviously wasn't an overnight change so what how was the process like and when did you realize that loving yourself was something that God wanted you to do yeah uh, obviously like you mentioned that uh, encountering Jesus falling in love with him is not a one-day affair you'll have to you'll, you'll need time for that you'll have to spend time with him and you will have to put in your own time as mm -hmm. well it's not that you know suddenly you just what you see in the movie is not like suddenly he'll appear out of the blue. Maybe it can happen to somebody, mm. some people. But for most of us, what happens is you will have to spend time with him as mm. well. You'll have to give your, in your own mm. time. And you'll have to want that as well. Mm. Alright. So for me, when I encountered him, 
it was more of a he showed me that he loved me first before i could love myself he told me that he loved me so that that made me realize that if he loves me so much being god being the almighty father if he can love me why can't i love myself mm. so that really opened my eyes the moment that he told me that he loved me mm. first so that really changed my life it's beautiful that god sees you worthy right yeah, exactly. he loves you jesus loves you and another thing for me personally that really changed the way i see myself is again the very popular psalm you know what david mm. wrote that i'm fearfully and wonderfully made no. and i think when when that's not just a verse anymore but your reality i remember as i started reading the word i'm as it is not a very voracious reader so i don't like reading very lengthy chapters and like you know i'll finish the entire new testament in 2 months for me it was like one verse at a time chew it digest it and let the lord speak to you through that verse so i remember that was my verse for that season you know that i'm fearfully and wonderfully made and that god didn't make a mistake with me if my nose is not like somebody else's nose that's because god thinks that's the right one for me and if if god's given me a particular type of eye color or skin color for that matter it's mm. because he thinks it's beautiful yeah. and i think all of these perspectives that we have of white and black or dark and fair mm -hmm. you know these have its roots in a completely different ideology which i don't want to get into right now but it's again a very man made idea right exactly and it's it's sad that in one nation they think that being fair is a good thing and another they may think being tanned is a good thing so you see people yeah. wanting to become tan but i mean no issues with that if you really feel like it's from the lord it's going to be a blessing for you mm -hmm. to get yourself tanned or fair that's not a problem however just to learn to be thankful for the way lord, the lord made you i love that exactly. you know that the lord did not make a mistake with you yeah. and he he made you fearfully and wonderfully And if you remember Genesis it says this right that we are made in the image of God image of Christ yes right? where God said let us make man in our image so if we say we love God but we loathe ourselves we don't like our own image technically you're you're in a way disliking God yeah because we are made in his image so if you don't like yourself like i said you are just questioning God's image and you're questioning God's idea so would you like to add to that yeah i totally agree with that because if God has made you in his image. I don't think he makes any mistakes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any faults. He is perfect to be honest. And if he has not made a mistake in making you, you should you should believe that too. Mm -hmm. You should believe that whatever you are, however you are, you're perfect in him. Mm. And I was reading, you know, the gospel according to Matthew just i think the other day where this the sick person comes to the lord and the message translation mm. puts it very well where jesus says you become what you believe yeah you become what you believe so if you believe that you are ugly the world will see you as that but if you believe that you are beautiful not because of how amazing you are but because the lord took time to make you yeah. you know if you believe that just change your belief system i believe it begins to reflect in your personality as well right do you do you yes that? and i've noticed that uh, i've noticed the people in our ministry as well that once they believe in jesus they start to transform mm -hmm. there's a transformation in their lives not just spiritually but also physically yeah. they start to glow they start to look so much better mm -hmm. uh, it's mainly the image of christ that we see in them in them absolutely so that's what i've noticed mm -hmm. uh And I think that's very biblical. The Bible talks about this that those who put their trust in the Lord begin to radiate with mm -hmm. his glory. That happened with Moses. Yes. My pastor actually says that he became like, you know, a tube light. He was that <laughs> bright Moses. So the thing is, when you put your faith in the Lord and you become a new creation, the old is gone, the new has come. Shame leaves you, sin leaves you. So automatically 99% of that darkness mm -hmm. and that gloom that was showing on your face leaves. And so now what people see is a glory. Yeah. You know that it becomes open now for the Lord's glory to shine through you. Amen. So I think that that's what is happening yeah, like you exactly. said in our church and exactly. our ministry and even if you go through our older photographs I think maybe we'll attach some if you want just to see that it's not like we underwent some massive transformation yeah. or went through some treatments but it is really the glory of the Lord. Exactly. In fact before I think we were you know spending much more on as a child <laughs> I was spending a lot on makeup. and uh, a lot on just concealing my flaws 
and um, not that I'm no, I, that I don't apply makeup now but uh, just that the change is not so much of the exterior but the yeah, interior exactly. right? the inside has changed however I, I would like to talk about another topic today Dr. Nabarun um, a lot of people are on the extreme side, right? They they judge those now who apply makeup mm -hmm. or uh, men who take care of themselves, who'd like to apply an extra cologne and a little more aftershave. There's also that judgmental attitude that, oh, God made you in his image, be natural. Why do you have to apply all of this? You know, there is also that kind of a perspective. So do you think that is wrong? Would you? Uh, yeah, I have my perspective. Uh, yes, God made you in his image, but God is also said that your body is his temple yeah so you need to take care of the temple mm -hmm. it depends on you how you take care of it what i would say is take a bath daily at least mm -hmm. take a bath daily you keep yourself clean um the basics yeah I, i'm not i'm not condoning you to apply makeup or anything it's up to you if you mm -hmm. want to do it you go ahead mm -hmm. but at least whatever god tells you to do mm -hmm. just do that beautiful that we are his temple and we must keep the temple hygienic, exactly. clean, and do our best mm -hmm. to maintain this temple of God, taking care of our health, our food habits, yeah. all of that. And for all the ladies watching this video, I don't think the Lord has a problem with you applying makeup. I absolutely do not think so. Queen Esther took part in a beauty pageant, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure she yeah. must have applied some yeah. sort of makeup, you know, for, the, for that time, whatever they had. But it should always be from a place of love. I am applying this lipstick because I'm beautiful, because I'm God's temple and I want to enhance this. So I just want to take care of this. Not because this lipstick or this foundation will make me beautiful. Yeah. Our beauty, our glory comes from Christ and the, the rest that we do is just an add-on. Yeah. But the main course has to be your identity in Christ and the minute that happens, I think it changes. And uh, you, you know, even for men, I think there's so much of... Uh, a different sort of a idea of ha being handsome, right? You have to be six feet tall, dark and handsome, or maybe tall, fair and handsome. Having to have these different, of particular body type. Even for ladies, of course, so much of competition. So how do you combat that when you see these images flashed on the television? You know, of a particular hero having this type of look. How do you how do you make sure that not that you criticize him, but at the same time you don't condemn yourself? for not looking exactly like that. Yeah, uh, what you see uh, on the TV or on the screen, you're not made in that person's image. Let me just tell you that. The Bible clearly says that you're made in God's image and everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Even though we're made in God's image, so we should, people might think that, okay, we should all look the same in that case. Mm. But God, when he made you, I you really use this word, God customized you. Mm. God has customized you in his own image. Mm. And everybody, that's why you look so different. Even identical twins, they're not exactly the same. Mm. There's some difference that you'll find in them. Mm. And you don't have to be conscious about, you know, being a particular, you'll have to fit into a certain uh, mold. You don't have to. Because you're not made in that person's image. You're made mm. in God's image. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's what I would like to say. Mm. You're made in God's image, not yeah. in somebody else's. And another thing for all the ladies and the men, I've worked in the field of media and this has been a huge part of what I've done all my life. And so what you see on TV, you know, there is a team working to yeah. make us look that way. <laughs> now when I look back at the days when I was anchoring, I looked amazing and I mean sorry if I sound like I'm boasting but the makeup artist did a wonderful job. Now when I when I remove that makeup and I'm in my pajamas, I don't look like that, you know, on a daily basis. That's not how I look. Beautiful nonetheless. You're handsome nonetheless, but not how you see on television because there's a lot of lighting techniques. Yeah. There's a lot of contouring that goes on. So, like, you know, what you see on TV, appreciate it. Somebody else has worked really hard to look that way, but at the same time, don't condemn yourself because you don't look that way. And if you say you love the Lord, you must learn to love yourself because you're made in his image exactly don't force yourself to fit into the mold that mm. the society creates mm. and you become what you believe i think they say you are what you eat exactly. but you are also what you believe exactly so the right believing system or the right belief is so important mm -hmm. i think in conclusion you know uh, one thing i'd like to say and then i'll pass it on to you 
is that there's power in the tongue. We know that from Proverbs. There's power in the tongue. Uh, you know, there's life and death in your tongue. So if you always look at yourself and you say, oh, I'm so fat, oh, I'm so thin, oh, I'm so ugly, oh, I'm so dark, I'm so fair. You know, we have all of these things. If we keep releasing it, that, that has a huge impact on who you become. But if you say, no, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God did not make a mistake with me. I am unique. If you release life, you speak life over yourself and you begin to love yourself because of who you, whose image you are made in, you will see that you will attract love and honor from those around you as well. So that's what I would like to conclude with. What would you like yeah, to say? Yeah, I would have said the same thing exactly because uh, what I was speaking all throughout that don't go by society standards. What you see is not the actual truth. What God has called you to be, what God has asked you to be, if you focus on that, you'll actually know your identity. Mm -hmm. And that's what all, all, all that matters. So just trust in Him and just you know that you're a child of God and he has made you in his image and you have a purpose. Mm. And once you're clothed with the anointing yeah. that comes from the Holy Spirit, I think there's nothing that can make the ladies more beautiful and nothing that can make the men look more handsome. So let exactly. the Lord change your inside first. Yeah. And I think that will begin to reflect on the outside as well. So with that, we've come to the end of this episode of Let's Talk. If you were blessed by this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. And also, yes, comment below. We'd love to hear what you thought. And what would you like to see us talk about in the upcoming episodes? Let us know in the comment section below. Till then, take care, stay safe and we'll see you next week. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel.